What are the factors that actually guide people to cooperate or, or be selfish and engage in something known as free riding or social loafing? So I want to tell you that cooperation is actually really hard. So even though humans can do it in a way that no other uh, primate can on Earth, it's hard. And so here are some of the barriers to cooperation. One is known as what, what I refer to as the naysayer problem. This is the tendency to project our own behavior onto others. And this is more pronounced among defectors than cooperators. So what this means is that people who are more likely to be self-interested and not help out, one of the things that's going on is they expect other people to be selfish. And so they want to get there first because they think everybody's out trying to get theirs. Now, turns out cooperation is really fragile. If you have a couple people like this on a team that are never chipping in, never helping out, cooperation erodes really quickly. In fact, in the studies that we run in our lab, we see over and over again that cooperation starts really high, but once you see a few people de defect, over time it starts to erode. Even within a half hour, you can see cooperation eroding within a group. And so it turns out that this expectation that others are not going to be cooperative means certain people are less likely to cooperate themselves. So that it kind of becomes its own reality. Okay, so what are the factors that can trigger people into cooperation? How many people recognize this fellow? Do you, do you remember his name? Uh, Phineas, Gage. Phineas Gage. And do you recognize this hole in his skull right here? Yeah, yeah so he's famous for the hole in his skull. So Phineas Gage was uh, worked creating clearing paths for railroads kind of at the border of New Hampshire and Vermont over 100 years ago. And uh, what he had to do was put this tamping iron to put uh, like basically an explosive powder into rocks, and then they would set it off and it would blow up the rock, they'd clear it, they'd lay down the, the train tracks. Now, one day he got distracted, and this long iron rod that you see here um, shot right through his chin, or right through his cheek, and up through his skull. It shot about 60 feet in the air and landed far away from him. So it immediately knocked him down. Now, he had this huge hole in his skull. And he got up and he was dazed, and it turns out that there's actually not as much pain as you would expect from this because there's no pain receptors in your brain. Um, and they took him into town and, and he met with a doctor and he was able to have a conversation um, and they were able to basically patch up his wound and he lived uh, for at least 12 more years of his life, 12 more years. And one thing that they found was that his intellect was completely intact. So he was a smart, effective, he was actually a foreman at the time and he was just as smart. There was no evidence that his intellectual capacity deteriorated. But people who knew him said he was, quote, no longer Gage. In other words, something about his personality had switched. And he, become, he went from somebody who was very, a good leader, very cooperative, to somebody who was incredibly uh, arrogant and selfish. And no one wanted to be around him anymore. And so basically what we've done is we've brought in people with the same type of brain damage as Phineas Gage in the prefrontal cortex and we've been able to look at what part of the brain, when it's damaged, drives cooperation versus drives selfishness. And what we found that was uh, really striking to us and really interesting is that the more damage you have to this part of your brain, which is right here on the outside of your brain, right inside your skull, um, called your dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, the more damage people have to that part of the brain, the more selfish they become. And in fact, the one person we had who came in who had almost complete damage to that part of their brain cooperated zero times in the entire study that they, they had with us. Out of, 20, out of 20 opportunities, they were selfish 20 times. Um, what this means is that this part of the brain seems to be necessary for cooperation. Now, what is that part of the brain? That part of the brain is the part of the brain that differentiates us from every other species on Earth. Human, this is a uniquely human part of the brain, and it's involved in self-control. What this suggests is that if you don't have the capacity to control your selfish interests and overcome them, um, then you're not going to cooperate, as, at least in this sample. And so this seems to mean that if you're distracted or busy, um, I'm, I'm going to probably see about half of you check your phone over the course of this talk. This is exactly the type of activity that impairs your prefrontal cortex. Another part that impairs this part of the brain is stress. When you're in enormous stress, you start to not use your higher order cognitive functions. You start to more operate with emotions. And uh, research shows that this part of the brain becomes deactive. And so there's a number of things that happen in your daily uh, environment that impair your capacity to overcome your selfish impulses.